All right, Mr. Gibson here with your next lesson in cryptography. And today we're going to be talking about positional number systems, which is something that we use all the time. Our base 10 number system, or decimal as we call it, uh, is, a, is a prime example of a positional number system where every character, depending on where we write it or its position within the number, assigns some sort of value to that number that's not Im just implied based off of the character you've used. So when we define a positional number system, we say the base of the number system uh, does a couple of things. It identifies the value of each position in the system, uh, and it also tells you how many characters are needed to represent numbers. So for example, we use base 10. That tells us that every position within our digit of our number uh, is a, a certain power of 10, and there's also only 10 different characters that we need to represent our numbers. Those characters are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So the, the example we have on the screen, uh, 127, which we would read as 127, and we know that because the 1 is just a representation. There is one group of 100. The 2 represents two groups of 10s. That's, that's a power of 10. Uh, and the 7 represents seven groups of 1. And 1 is also a power of 10. It's 10 to the 0 power, just like 100 is 10 squared, 10 is 10 to the 1. So each of those positions tells us something about the value. The 2, we might think about that as representing 20, as opposed to if we started the number with a 2, that would be 200. So where the characters appear assign some value. We are most familiar with base 10 numbers, so we would call that decimal, and there's a couple of examples there, 17, 22, 99, 1000. Uh, and again, decimal uses the numbers 0 through 9. Now we're going to represent those same exact four quantities using different bases. So uh, another commonly used base in computer programming is octal. So as you might uh, see from both the name and the base number, uh, octal is a base of 8, and it uses the characters 0 through 7. Um, so the number 17 in base 10 becomes the number 21. We might read that as 21 because our brain is so trained on decimal. But the characters 2, 1 in base 8 is still 17. So it gets, it gets a little confusing when we're working in other bases when we try and read them out loud. Uh, the number 22 in decimal becomes the number 2, 6 in octal. Same quantity, even though they look different. And so on down the line. Another common representation of numbers in computer programming is hexadecimal, uh, so base 16. And our characters for that, this is where it gets a little tricky, unlike octal where we reduce the number of characters so we just don't use 8 and 9, uh, hexadecimal needs more characters than what we typically have available. So we're going to go 0 through 9 like normal, but when we get to our 10th character out of the 16 that we need, uh, we're going to switch over to the alphabet. So a quantity of 10 will be represented by A, a quantity of 11 will be represented by B, all the way up to a quantity of 15 represented by the letter F. So while we might say 17 in base 10, that's 1,1 one, one in hexadecimal. 1,000 in decimal is 3E8 in hexadecimal. And we're going to talk in just a second about how we can convert back and forth between these. So you don't have to worry about that quite yet. And then probably the most commonly known uh, alternate base number system that's used in computer programming is binary. Only two numbers. So we just use the numbers 0 and 1. So the number 17 in base 10 becomes 10001, and the number 1000 becomes 11111010000. And again, we're going to talk about how to convert over to that in just a moment. But these are the ones you're going to want to be familiar with when we're working with cryptography and programming because uh, different types of ciphers, when we start using computers, might implement uh, operations in different bases. And that'll be a lesson that we'll cover in just a little bit is how do we do mathematical operations with these different representations of the numbers. Here's a nice visual um, that kind of shows you uh, counting in the different number systems. So the, the third row labeled decimal in the blue is counting probably like we are used to counting. But we can see the counting taking place in the alternate number systems as well. So you can see that kind of binary is growing the fastest. Uh, octal 
kind of somewhere in the middle with decimal and then hexadecimal, if we let this run for just a little bit, we'll see, um, continues to grow, but we need fewer characters. And that's part of the reason why people like hexadecimal uh, is that it requires fewer characters uh, or fewer positions rather to represent the same size number. So we can see that hexadecimal got up to like five something, only only two de two places used where binary had like, you know, eight in there. So uh, it's a little more compact way to write, especially large numbers. Um, because it's not always obvious which base our number is going to be in when we write down the characters like three and then a seven, like is that is that 3737 or is that 37 as a base 8 number or a base 16 number? So uh, these are some conventions that you'll see um, depending on the context. So base 10 numbers, um, you would just write 1717, no additional information needed. Um, if you wanted to write the number 22 in base 10, uh, another way we could do that, which is common when you're programming, is the prefix 0 and then the lowercase letter d to represent decimal. And then you just write the number after, after the d. Uh, base 8. Uh, the number 17 would be 2, 1, and then a subscript of 8. Uh, and then likewise, uh, the number 22 in decimal, uh, when we convert to octal, becomes 2, 6, and we can represent that with a uh, 0 and then a lowercase o as the prefix. Similar uh, types of notation for base 16 and base 2, you can either use a subscript that denotes the base of the, of the number that you've written with the characters, or hexadecimal can have a prefix of 0x, uh, and binary will have a prefix of 0b. All right, let's take a look at actually doing some conversion of other bases into decimal. Uh, let's just start with kind of a refresher how we take our normal base 10 numbers and we convert them to a value in our head. Um, so here we've got the number 4,237, 4237, and under each place I've written uh, the value of that position. So the 7 is 10 to the 0, so again, that's 7 ones. Um, under the 3, we've got 10 to the 1, which means we have 3 tens. Uh, under the 2, we've got 10 squared, so we've got 2 one hundreds. And then under the 4, we've got 10 cubed, so that's 4 one thousands. And we can kind of write it out like that. So 4 times 10 to the cube plus 2 times 10 squared, plus 3 times 10 to the 1, plus 7 times 10 to the 0, gives us the quantity that we're looking for here as decimal. Now, this one's already in decimal, so that doesn't really illuminate anything to us, but having that strategy is going to be helpful when we do work on other bases. So for example, let's take a look at the binary number 1011, and say we wanted to figure out what that was as a decimal. We can use the value of each position to help us convert. So like we did before, we can kind of work from left to right. Uh, the first number one indicates to us that we have one group of two cubed. So one times two cubed, that's, that's eight, plus zero of two squared. So we got none of those. So that's we're gonna add on zero. And then we the uh, orange one, so one, two to the one, we'll add that on. So now we've got eight plus zero plus two. And the last one is one group of one, because two to the zero is one. So we add all that all up, and we get 11, written as a base 10 number. We can do the same thing with hexadecimal. Uh, again, as a reminder, uh, B is uh, the, basically equivalent to the number 11, whereas E is equivalent to the number uh, 14. So that'll become helpful here in just a moment. So we're going to convert these to decimal by, again, same operation. So the number 2 tells us we have two groups of 16 cubes. B tells us we have 11 groups of 16 squared. 7 tells us we have 7 groups of 16 to the 1. And E tells us we've got 14 groups of 16 to the 0. So we can just throw that into a calculator and we'll crunch out the number 11,135. So again, it's the same number, just two different ways to write it. 2B7E, hexadecimal, 11,135, base 10. Going the other way is a little bit trickier, but it's not too bad. So let's convert decimal numbers to other bases. So let's say that we've got our binary number, uh, sorry, our decimal number, 4, 2. We want to convert it to binary. So the first question is, what is the biggest power of 2 that is less than the number we're working with. So we know that 2 to the 5th is 32, and that is smaller than 42. Uh, the next largest power of 2, 2 to the 6th, is 64, and that's bigger than 42. So we know that this number is going to be no bigger than 2 to the 5th. Um, sorry, 
we know that this number will require no more digits than the 1 in the 2 to the 5th position. We call this number a 6-bit number. In binary, each position is referred to as a bit. So 2 to the 5th is the largest bit that we need, and we'll need no more than 6 bits to represent this number. So now that we know that the first position of the number is 1 in the 2 to the 5th position, we need to figure out the remaining bits. And we know that in total, the remaining bits need to account for the, the last 10 of value of 42. That first bit accounts for 32 out of the 42. The remaining 5 bits have to account for the last 10. So we need to think about, okay, if I need to add 10 more to the value here, what's the next biggest power of 2 that is smaller than 10? And that's 2 cubed. So I'm going to start filling in some of these blanks here. I now know that the from going from left to right, I need 1, 0, 1, and 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 4th, and 2 to the 3rd, respectively. And that gets me up to a total of 40. So I need to represent two more with the remaining three bits. Now, lucky for us, there's a position that represents a value of 2, and that's the 2 to the 1 spot. So we can fill that up. And at this point, the bits that we've written account for all of the value we need from this number, so that last spot must be a zero. So again, we can verify the similar way that we just saw. We have one group of 2 to the 5th, one group of 2 cubed, and one group of 2 to the 1. Together, those things are 32, 8, and 2, which totals up to 42. We can do the same thing with hexadecimal. So if we have the, the um, decimal number 541, there are two groups of 16 squared. 16 squared is 256. There are two groups of that uh, that fit into 541 because that, that would be 512. That means that we have a remaining uh, value of 29 that we need to account for. So if we need 29, uh, I know I can do that with one group of 16. That gets me up to 528. And now we have a remaining 13 that we need to account for with the last position. And 13 has its own character in hexadecimal, it's the character D. So 21D is equivalent to 541 in decimal. So that's, that's the quick version of what a positional number system gets you, multiple ways to represent the same number. We can convert back and forth to decimal. Um, and we could even, there's some algorithms for directly converting, say, from binary to hexadecimal or octal to binary. But for the purpose of this course, just going back to decimal and then decimal to your new system is probably going to be the easiest way for you to think about it. In a future lesson, we're going to learn how we can work with operations on these numbers. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.